right, here's a video on how to find critical points of functions using derivatives. And by critical points, we simply just mean, you know, maxes and mins and other points where the uh, derivative might not even exist. And as you know, you're probably well aware now that the, the derivative is more or less just a little formula that tells us where, you know, tells us the slope of a function. All right, we talk about tangent lines of functions, right, if we have a point here, the tangent line, that's not a very good example, the tangent line touches the function only at one point, and that'll tell you the general sort of slope of the curve at that point. So this one down here, for example, has a tangent line that looks something like that. It's downhill, which means my derivative will be a negative. Right here, the derivative is positive because the tangent line that touches that curve is positive. So it's uphill, the general you know, shape of the graph is increasing. All right, <clears throat> when the graph sort of flattens out and changes from a negative derivative to a positive derivative, that's called a minimum value. That's like, a, in this case, an extrema, an absolute min, or in a lot of cases, just local or relative minimum values. But here, the uh, derivative is zero. So your derivative is zero, because your slope of the tangent line is zero. The graph sort of flattens out. So obviously I think that it kind of goes without saying that if we're looking for all this derivative stuff and we get a function, let's find the derivative of it. So you take that two, this is the power rule, and you multiply it by the number in front. There's a one there, two times one is one. Keep the x and reduce your exponent by one. This x term is linear to begin with, one times one is one. Write the x and reduce your exponent by one. The constants cancel out. The derivative of a constant is just zero. So let's simplify this. 2x to the first plus one times x to the zero is just one. So we'll just write it like that. So here's our derivative. And if you're a little sort of fuzzy on that process, go and look for my video on the power rule for finding derivatives. So once we have our derivative, right, this is the general formula that's going to give us the steepness or the slope of our line at any given x value. So we need to set that equal to zero because we want to figure out where this graph sort of flattens out. So 2x is equal to negative 1, x is negative 1 half. So this right here is you know where where we're sort of focusing our attention on for right now. So let's draw a little number line here. We'll do a very quick test. We're going to do a first derivative test. So I want to pick a number to the left of negative one half. Let's choose negative one. I'm going to plug that into my derivative. Two times negative one plus one. Well, that's negative two plus one is negative one. So to the left of this point or this x value, it gives me a negative derivative. Negative derivative, of course, means the graph, the function is actually going downhill. Pick a number over here. Let's pick, you know, positive one would be probably the most logical thing to choose. So now we're just going to test this function to see what happens when you plug in positive one or positive really anything. You could have even used zero. Zero would work. Zero is certainly to the right of negative one half. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. That's a positive number. So the graph goes uphill. When the derivative is negative, the graph goes downhill. When the derivative is positive, the graph goes uphill. Where it changes from, up, from downhill to uphill, that's where we get our minimum value. You can see that's right here. All right, so that is, of course, a very critical point in this graph. All right, that minimum value which is, let me use a different color, which is right here, negative one half comma something. And that's something you can get from the actual function. Plug negative one half into the original function, and that'll give you this y value right here. The original function was, was up here, x squared plus x minus six x squared plus x minus 6. So just plug in negative 1 half and we'll see what we get. 
decimals are pretty normal here. Don't worry about that. This is negative one half squared is positive one over four minus a half minus six. Let's get all the denominators the same. One fourth minus two fourths minus twenty four fourths. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1, minus 24 more is negative 25. So that's negative 6. Let's see, 25 divided by 4 is 6, and it looks like a remainder of 0.25. So negative 6.25 is our y value. In other words, when x is negative 1 half, y is negative 6.25. That is your minimum value our minimum value. Right, and we get that from basically looking at the function, finding the first derivative, setting it equal to zero, solving, and then doing this test. All right, sometimes that test will yield, you know, this is a plus and a plus. When that happens, then of course you don't have a max or a min. The graph just kind of flattens out. The one that I can think of that does that is x to the third graph flattens out right here and that will be of course not a very critical point it'll have some significance uh, when we talk about concavity and things like that with, with second derivatives but we'll get there uh, soon all right next one this is a cubic we're looking for the critical points I can see one right here and I can see one right here Let's figure out those exact values though. So let's find the derivative. Three times two is six. <clears throat> X squared plus 10 X to the first, and that just disappears. That's your derivative, let's set it equal to zero. We'll factor out, you know, maybe an X out of both of them. So six X plus 10 equals zero. Branch out, six X plus 10 equals zero and x equals zero. So there's one and the other one is going to be looks like negative five over three. And just to kind of test those to make sure, right, we can see that our graph is hopefully, you know, we can see that, let's see, this is negative one half, this is negative 1.5. So it makes sense to me that this would be negative 1.6 repeating. All right, so that looks to be a max, and of course x is zero right here. So let's just check that again. We want to set up our number line. This is a simple first derivative test. We have a zero right here, and we have a negative 1.6 repeating right here. So let's pick a number to the left of negative 1.666. Let's choose negative two. And I'm going to check negative 2. I'm going to plug it into my first derivative. So uh, let me get rid of this for a second. Let's plug it into to this. Negative 2 squared plus 10 times negative 2. So 6 times 4 minus 20. 24 minus 20 is a positive 4. So my derivative is positive right here, which means my function is going uphill. In between negative one and two thirds and zero, uh, let's just choose negative one. Let's test negative one into our first derivative and we'll see what we get. I'm not really concerned about what number we get, I'm more concerned about whether it's positive or negative. Six times negative one squared is positive six, minus 10 is negative four. Uh, so that's negative right in there. So the graph goes downhill right there. And over here, let's choose the number one. Number one is certainly bigger than zero. Let's test number one into our first derivative and see what we get. So six plus 10 is 16, that's a positive. So there my function reverses and goes back uphill. So when it goes from up to down, all right, the graph is a max, and when it goes from down to up, the graph is a min. Pretty easy to see. So those critical points, negative five over three comma something and zero comma something. And those values you can just get, like we did in the last one, just get from plugging the 
negative five thirds into the original and get that y value. Plug in zero into the original and get that y value. So there you go. We're moving into a discussion of concavity next, where you know, especially as it relates to uh, inflection points, right? Con you know, this one, for example, I might sort of give away the hints, but this one kind of is concave up, right? If we think about this graph as sort of being able to hold water, that's a discussion of concavity. And then sometimes graphs change concavity. Right here, it holds water, but right here, water would sort of fall off of it. So this concavity is down while this one is up. Well, that's not a discussion of first derivative. It's a discussion of second derivative. We're going to get there next. The point where the graph changes concavity is called the inflection point. So look forward to that. But <clears throat> there was a uh, sort of brief discussion. That's not a very thorough discussion, but a very brief discussion on critical points. So thanks for watching.